Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be painting this 10 inch piece of wood. I get these from Amazon. So almost all of the tools that I'll be using in this video you can find in my Amazon shop, which I will leave a link in the description of the video. Um, that can also be found by going to my website, which is thoughtfuldots.com and then just click on the tools I use tab and that will take you right to my Amazon shop. So I will be using this Lazy Susan to help me turn. And as you guys can see, I've already painted our base and today I'm doing something a little bit different than our regular black. I have painted this base using Deco Art Americana and Royal Navy. So just a really pretty dark navy color. And I'm just gonna quickly go through some of the tools that we'll be using. I will be using this nail stylus set and I will also leave a link in the description of the video with a chart. It's a size chart so you guys can see um, the exact size of the tools for the specific set that I'm using and then you can convert it to whatever set you're using but I just say large end of the green tool or small end of the green tool and then you guys will have to look at the chart to see the size if you want to know the exact size and I'll be using my dotting rods by Happy Dotting Company and these have the millimeter size right on the handle which makes it really easy. So I'll be sharing that with you guys as we go. And then I'll be using some brushes. These are the US Art Supply brushes and these have sizes on the handle. So I'll let you guys know, but you can use really any other brush set that you guys already have. And I will be using this compass to draw on our guide marks and I will be using this Bressarth white charcoal pencil. Love this pencil. And that is about it. I am gonna go over the colors with you guys real quick. And today I think I'll just be pouring them in this palette. So we are doing the Royal Navy background and then I picked some colors that I think will look nice on a blue background. So we are using Deco Art in Mulberry, Frosted Plum, French Mauve, and then Moody Blue and Open Water. And these are very similar colors Open water is a little bit more like teal, just a tiny, tiny bit, but I'm going to be adding white to that to make it a little bit lighter, but that is pretty much our palette for today. And I guess I didn't really think about it, but gold would look really good with this. Um, I was going to do white accents, but I think gold might look better. This is Deco Art Americana in Glorious Gold, my favorite gold. So yeah, maybe we'll do gold accents instead of white. I think that will be really pretty. All right, so that is it for tools we will be using. I'm just gonna go ahead, oh, stencil. So these are also in my Amazon shop. This is a 12 point mandala stencil. This is a 16. I'm going to be using a 16 today. And to find the center, I just kind of eyeball. So I'm making sure I'm looking at like these edges and just seeing if they're all even on all four sides. And then I just make a little dot and that's an approximate. Then my pencil and I put it on that center and then I bring it all the way out to the edge 
right on the edge. And then I'm just gonna make sure that it's hitting evenly on all sides. So I don't know if you guys can see, but this one goes all the way out to the edge. This one does not, so it needs to be moved over just a tiny, tiny bit. And then I'm checking the other side. And you basically just wanna make sure that it's hitting at the same point all the way around. And you can even just make a circle. Sometimes that makes it easier to see, but that looks pretty even. So I'm just going to push down. And that's pretty much where our dot already is. So I will just leave that there. Taking my pencil out. I'm just gonna put this right over the center dot and we are going to make our 16 lines. And then I also make just one set of these circular guide marks and then I will use my compass to draw those circle guide marks. Um, I don't like using this to make the circular guide marks because there's these little um, gaps like in between each one. So I like a solid circle and just going through and doing each one is tedious, so it's easier and faster just to do it with a compass. So I'm gonna grab a ruler, and we are just going to extend these guide marks all the way out to the edge, so I'm just lining it up. And this is pretty much the same process that I do for all of my larger mandalas as well. I will just use a larger ruler and then I also have this extra large compass that I use for larger ones. So it's basically the same tools, just in a larger scale for my large mandalas. And again, those are in my Amazon shop. All right. So we are just gonna do this for each line. So we have our vertical guide marks. So now we're gonna do the circular ones. So I'm just going to pop this in my electric sharpener real quick. If you've experienced your chalk or charcoal pencils just crumbling in your, um, like one of these just manual sharpeners, it might be worth it to try out an electric sharpener. That is, one of the best purchases I've made in a while. It, my pencils do not crumble, which is so nice and easy. Okay, so now we're just gonna put this on our center dot. And then I'm going to put it on the first line here. I'll measure these for you. I believe they are a centimeter. 
So these are roughly a centimeter apart. And then I go back through and add one in the middle. So they will ultimately be about a half a centimeter apart. So we're first going just on each line that we made. It's okay if yours are a little bit different size than mine. It doesn't have to be exact, but we will just add a couple more. I'll do them about a centimeter. Okay, and then we're gonna go back through each, each um, guide mark that we already made. So we're basically doubling the amount. Okay, and then one more. All right, so there we have our guide marks. So these end up being about a half a centimeter between each guide mark. All right, so we can get started. I'm just gonna grab my palette. And we just need to decide what color to start with. Um, I kind of want to start with the moody blue. So you want a good amount of paint, especially for the center dot. So now we just need to decide what size we want our center dot to be. And I'm just grabbing paper towel to wipe the tool off with. I think this is the largest dotting rod that I have. So I wanna try it, 15 and a half. So especially for the larger dots, you wanna make sure you load a good amount of paint on your tool and then I always lift it up and look underneath to make sure that there's like a mound of paint underneath like almost dripping off. And then we're just going to dot right over that center. And see how there's ripples? That means that we need more paint. So then I'm just kind of hovering over the top, 
tapping a little bit to unload some of that paint until we get that nice mound. Looks like there's a little something stuck in the paint there. So just smoothing that out. Okay, so now we have a nice mound. For the next color, I'm gonna do the gold. So I'm just taking my little pot. And I'm gonna use the small end of the yellow tool. And we are just going to start our first ring of dots. The gold looks really good on the blue background. I'm glad that we chose that. So these, you're just placing them close to one another without touching. And then just along the large blue dot that we just made, but also without touching. We just don't want any of the paint to run together. And I don't count these. I'm just getting them right next to one another and doing my best to keep them the same size. If paint starts to build up on your tool, the dots will start to get bigger. So you can just wipe that off if it starts to happen. So we just wanna to try to keep them all the same size. So as you get to the end, I'm just kind of eyeballing. I think I can fit about three dots there. All right, so there is our first row. Next, I'm just looking at my colors. I'm gonna go for the Frosted Plum. <clears throat> and for the next row, we wanna go up in size slightly, so I'm gonna go up to now the larger end of the yellow tool. And we will just dot about in between each gold dot from the previous row. So I don't know why, but the spacing's a little bit off there. So I was going in between each gold dot, but then the spacing just like got a little wide. So 
I'm just gonna go, instead of going in between each gold dot, I'm just gonna continue to make these right next to one another. If the spacing's off, I would rather just have this row um, have the dots all be right next to one another than trying to like keep them in between each gold dot if the spacing is like weird. I hope that makes sense. So like we were starting in between each gold dot and then the spacing got a little bit off at some point. So instead of continuing to try to go in between each gold dot, I just made them right next to one another. And honestly, I feel like you can't even tell. So, and now our spacing for this last row is better. So now when we do the next one, it should be, we should be able to go in between each one with no problem. Okay. So I'm just looking at the colors here. So I wanted to do the open water. It's a new bottle, so I'm just opening it and then making sure it's shaken. So I don't know if you can really tell, but open water is just slightly more of a teal compared to the um, moody blue. So I might actually just leave that one just plain open water on its own. And then I think I'll make one more that has a drop of white just to make um, a third color. I'm just looking for my white. I like to use Deco Art Snow White. So I'm just gonna add a drop. another drop. I just want a little bit more contrast between these two. So that's perfect. That will give us three bluish tones and then three of the like purple mauve tones. Six colors is kind of like my sweet spot, plus an accent, so we're using gold as the accent. So now we have moody blue, open water, and a little bit of a lighter open water. So for the next row, I'm gonna use the open water. And we want to go up in size on the tool, so I'm going to go up to the larger end of the white tool. And we will just go in between each dot from the previous row. For some reason, this paint this specific color is a little bit on the thinner side. Um, actually, I do know why. It's because I opened the brand new bottle and I did shake it, but I noticed when I poured it out, there was some of that um, clear fluid that's in the bottle that sometimes you get when it's not shaken all the way. So that can sometimes make your paint a little more thin, so. That's what happened here. So I'm just got to be careful not to let them touch because they will run together.
Okay. And I want to do another row. I'm going to do the mulberry. This is a new one also. So I just want to shake it up, make sure that that liquid is not sitting on the top. It's a really pretty color. So we're going to go up in size, so I'm going to use the large end of the blue tool. And again, we will just dot in between each dot from the previous row. Colors look so good on this background. So again, my in between every dot got off a little bit here, but it doesn't really bother me. Okay, so trying to think what I want to do at the next part. I'm going to grab a small dotting rod. Colors I want to use. I think I'm going to use the frosted plum and I'm just going to make, let's see how big that is. Okay, let me just make sure my tool size is okay. So size five, and I'm just going to dot on every vertical guide mark. And I want to leave a little gap in between because we're going to make some swooshes there. So we're placing a dot on each of the vertical guide marks. And just being sure to leave a gap in between. For our little swooshes. Okay, 
Now I'm gonna do some swooshes right in between and I'm gonna use the gold. So I'm gonna use the large end of the green stylus tool and I'm gonna make a dot right in between each plum dot we just made and then I'm gonna flip the tool over and use the small end to drag them down. I like the gold accent. I think white would also look really good. But I do like the gold. Okay. So that is where we are currently with our pattern. It's looking good. just thinking of what I want to do next. I didn't plan this pattern, so we're just kind of going with the flow here. I'm going to take this moody blue and let's do the six and a half. And I'm going to dot on every other gold swoosh and I'm just looking and those gold swooshes are right in the middle of this vertical guide mark and this vertical guide mark. So we just want our dot to be in between these vertical guide marks. So six and a half rod. So I'll just do my best to keep it in the middle of this guide mark and this guide mark. And then we're gonna skip and do every other And next, I'm gonna grab the gold and the small end of the yellow stylus tool. And I'm just gonna dot at the top and then walk the dots down. And we will just do that for each large blue dot. All right. Next, um, let's see here. So I know I want to do some brush strokes um, around these petals that we're building right now. 
but I think we need one more set of walking the dots. So I'm thinking just like a couple steps ahead, um, we can do one more set of walking the dots and then we're gonna do brush strokes. So I'm just thinking of what color I want those brush strokes to be. And I think I want the brush strokes to be the mulberry. So I actually just realized we haven't used um, French mob yet. So let's go ahead and do that one next. And then we will do the brush strokes in mulberry. So I'm just pouring the French mob. And I want the tip to have a bigger dot. So I'm gonna use the large end of the green tool to make a larger dot at the tip. I don't know why, but this French mauve, like every bottle of it that I've had, it's just like a thicker consistency than the rest of the deco art colors. That happens. Sometimes there's like specific colors that are thicker or just like it that came out really big, <laughs> but it's okay. There's some of their colors that are randomly like either thicker or thinner. Just a couple for the most part. Most of the deco art is the same consistency. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it over and use the smaller end of the green tool. And we will just walk the dots. Okay, so now we're gonna do some brush strokes going around these petals. So I want a little bit of a thinner brush. I'm just getting it wet. This is the US Art Supply 2 over 0 brush. So just a little bit on the thinner side, not too long, just kind of the medium brush. And we are going to Make some brush strokes around, and then we want the brush stroke to end all on the same guide mark so that each brush stroke, um, each petal is the same height. So they'll all end about that one, maybe a little bit shorter. And I like to make sure to leave a little gap in between each petal. I don't like the brush strokes to touch. I like there to be a little gap in between. So we are going to do some swooshes in between each petal. So I'm going to take the open water and I'm going to use the large end of the green tool and I'm going to dot in between each petal and then I'm going to keep each swoosh starting right below this guide mark. And then we'll just swoosh down.
Okay, now we're gonna do another swoosh and I'm gonna use the Frosted Plum. And I'm gonna use the large end of the green tool again. And I'm just going to dot on both sides of that blue swoosh that we just made. And then they're just slightly shorter than that one. And then we are dragging down. And we will do that for each swoosh. Okay, and then we're gonna do another swoosh and just trying to think of a color. I think I wanna do the French mob color. And I'm gonna just use the small end of the green tool now. And I'm just gonna do a dot and drag so it's smaller than the one that we just made and slightly shorter. So that is where we are currently at. Um, I'm going to do some little gold dots right in this space here before we move on to our next portion of the pattern. So I'm gonna use the small end of the green tool and the gold, and I'm just gonna dot on both sides of that blue swoosh and just walk the dots out until the tip of the pe flower petal. And I'm just going right below the guide mark so everything's in line. Next, we are going to do some lotus flower patterns using a brush. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. This is five over zero. So just like a shorter, thinner brush. Just getting it wet. And I'm just gonna kind of plan the size. Okay, and then I just gotta think of what color. I think we will do, I kinda wanna do the mulberry. So I'm gonna take the mulberry color and the brush, and I'm gonna start it at the same guide mark that we ended our last pattern. So I'm just thinking about size real quick. One second. I'm just trying to think if this size is okay or if I want to do it a little bit bigger. I think that's fine. It's 
So I'm just making this kind of diamond shape and so we start at this guide mark, then there's one, two, three. So it's about the length of three guide marks. And then we are going to do the same. I don't know that thickness, so we'll just have to eyeball it a bit. But we're just making this like diamond or leaf pattern. You could also make them longer too. Just trying to think. Well, I've already committed, so we'll just keep them this length, but you could do them a little longer if you wanted. So you just want to make sure that they are starting and stopping on the same guide mark. And we're skipping every other vertical guide mark. So some of these ended up being thinner than like this one, but it's totally fine. They don't need to be exactly the same. Just rinsing that brush off. So I'm going to do, let's see here. Let's do the open water, same brush. And we are going to start a brush stroke at the same, right below the same guide mark that we ended this pattern. And we are just going to outline that diamond shape that we just made. Okay, I'm just rinsing off the brush. And next I'm going to use the frosted plum color. And we are going to make a swoosh. Now another brush stroke that's slightly shorter than this one. And we're just kind of making the lotus flower shape. So it will start to look like a little blooming flower. Okay, and now I'm just rinsing the brush off. And next I'm going to do the open water. And we're just doing the same thing. We're gonna do another brush stroke, but just slightly shorter than the last one.
just rinsing off my brush and I'm just looking, cause I'm looking at the spacing here. So we can probably fit two more brush strokes and we just wanna make our Lotus pattern come all the way out to this center guide mark so that we're filling in the gap there. So I'm going to take the French mauve color and it's really thick, um, like I said. So I'm going to, if we use that one, it's gonna give us really uneven, not smooth brush strokes. That looks a little better. Maybe that one's just a little bit dried up. So we will see. Okay, that looks better. So those ones are about the same length as the previous. We're just trying to get the pattern to come all the way out to this um, center guide mark. Okay, I'm just rinsing off my brush and then I'm gonna do one more brush stroke and it's gonna be gold. And I'm going to make these ones come all the way out to that vertical guide mark that's going in between each pattern. Okay, so there are our little lotuses. And I'm just rinsing off my brush. And then I'm just gonna finish off this little section by doing some swooshes. So I'm using the large end of the green tool. I'm just gonna make a dot and a swoosh. And then I'll use the small end to just do a dot and swoosh. So these are just really tiny little swooshes so that's actually a little easier so we'll use the large end to make a dot and then drag and then just use the large end again to make two little dots and then the small end to drag. Okay, so that is where our pattern is currently at. And we are going to move on to the next portion. Um, once this dries a little bit, we'll go and add like a little detail on here. But now we're just thinking about the next pattern. I think I just want to do some basic petals. So I'm going to use the size nine dotting rod and we are going to dot at the top or at the above each of the gold swooshes that we just made. So let me just think of what color. I think I want to do blue. So let's do the moody blue size nine dotting rod. 
I'm gonna need a little more paint. I just noticed I got a little paint over here, so I'm just gonna grab a Q-tip. Just wipe up those little spots. Okay, now I'm gonna take the gold and I'm gonna use the large end of the yellow tool and I'm going to walk the dots. So dot, and then just down the side of each blue dot. And we will do that all the way around. Now I'm going to take the large end of the white tool and let's do the French mauve color. And I'm going to make a dot and I'm going to leave a slight gap between the gold dot and the French mauve for the first one. And then the next one we will go down right against the gold and that will give us a nice little peak. Instead of having it rounded, it gives us a nice little peak at the tip and it makes it look more like a flower petal. So we will just do that all the way around. All right, I'm gonna move up to the large end of the blue tool and we are just gonna keep walking the dots. I'm just thinking of what color and I'm gonna do the, let's do, darn, I can't remember what color that was. I think that was moody blue. Let's do open water, but let's do the lighter version. And again, we're gonna dot and we're gonna go leave a little bit of a gap between the previous row and our first blue dot. 
Then for the next one, we'll go right back down and that will give us that nice little peak. And we will just repeat this all the way around. Okay, we're gonna do one more set of walking the dots. And I'm gonna go up to the large end of the green tool and I'm just gonna pour a little bit more mulberry. And we will do our final set of walking the dots. All right, so we are gonna do some brush strokes. So I'm pouring a little bit more of the Frosted Plum and I'm going to use the two over zero brush. So that medium brush. So pushing down and then lightening up towards the tip. Okay, I'm just gonna rinse my brush off. And we're gonna take the gold and the small end of the white tool. And we're just gonna make some little walking the dots just right on the tip. 
of the petals and we are going to be doing one more brush stroke after so make sure there's just a little bit um, of space left up here to end our brush strokes on so we're just going to do that on the tip of each petal Okay, and for our last set of brush strokes, I'm gonna go up to a larger brush. This is the number one. So it's a longer bristle and a little bit thicker. So that will give us a thicker brush stroke, which I want because we wanna fill in this gap here. And then I'm going to do open water So I just need more for our brush strokes. So I want these to be nice and thick. So I'm gonna really push down and then lighten up on the pressure towards the tip. So really pushing and then lightening up. It does get a little bit tricky when you're working on a Lazy Susan just because you have to like push it up and move it each time. But these are so thin that if I take it off the Lazy Susan and I'm spinning with my hand, um, there's a chance that I could slip and run my finger through the paint, which I just did yesterday on in a, during a painting class. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to be careful today and just keep it on the Lazy Susan. So as you turn, just be careful not to get your hand in wet paint. Okay, so we are going to take the mulberry and the large end of the green tool and I'm gonna do a swoosh starting here going down so that just leaves about one more guide mark going upward. So one, two is where we're going to make our swoosh. Okay, and now I'm going to take the French mauve, and again, that just got thick. I'm just going to add some fresh paint. And I'm going to make a dot, I'm doing it slightly. I'm leaving a slight gap so that we get that point again. And 
I'm just walking the dots. And these are a little bit bigger because that paint is just thick. Okay, and now we're gonna take our medium brush. So, where is mine? Oh, here we go. So mine is the two over zero. And what color? I kinda wanna do... I'm just doing some practice. We're gonna do kind of a lotus pattern, kind of similar. I'm gonna take the mulberry and I'm gonna bring the brush stroke all the way up to the edge of the board. And then bring it downward. We're gonna do that for each pattern. And there's still this vertical guide mark, so I'm doing starting the brush stroke on either side of that vertical guide mark. I'm just rinsing off my brush. Next brush stroke, I'm gonna do the Moody Blue. And we're going to make these significantly shorter. So I'm gonna start here. And then I'll probably just do one more after. So you just wanna make sure there's room for one more brush stroke after this. So for the final color, I'm trying to decide if I want to do gold or pink, French mauve. I think I'll do French mauve. So we're going to do our last brush stroke in the French mauve color. And again, these will just be slightly shorter. And we just want to fill that gap.
All right, I'm just rinsing my brush off. And we are gonna do some of those little walking the dots here. But I want them to be bigger, so I'm gonna use the large end of the blue tool and the gold. And I'm gonna start on either side of the I actually think I want them bigger than this one. Let's try the green. I'm gonna start them on either side of the petals. And we're just gonna do that all the way around. And then if you want to fill in this space a little bit more, um, you can do some more dots, but then go the opposite direction. So start like at about that shorter blue brush stroke, and then just walk these out the opposite way of the other ones. And that looks kind of cool. Okay, so now we have our little dot accents. So at this point, I'm just going to let this dry for like 30 minutes and then we will go back in and do some accents. I'm gonna pick out some Nouveau drops for my accents. Um, if you don't have Nouveau drops, then if you have, um, you could use gold or if you have any metallics that match this pattern, metallics look really good for adding those little accents. So, um, yeah, we will let this dry and then we'll come back and finish this up. Okay, so this has dried for a bit. So now I'm going to add some top dots. I'm going to be using Nouveau Drops. If you don't have Nouveau Drops, you can use any other color or metallics that you have. I'm going to start with this light pink color, Shimmering Rose. And I just like to make sure there's no air bubbles. And I am going to be dotting on top of each of the larger dots from our center rings. And I love the Nuvo drops because they're dimensional and they dry plump like this. They don't flatten out. I really like the shimmer ones or the metallics. So it just makes it pop. I love them. Okay, now I'm 
gonna do gold. This is mustard gold. And I'm going to do some right in the center of these blue dots. You could also just use regular gold paint and do some top dots if you don't have Nugo drops. And then I'm gonna take that light pink and do some dots at the tip of our lotus and then I'm just going to oh, drag that up. That first one got a little weird, but it's okay. I might just need a thinner tool. I'll use the small end of the pink tool. We just want a little point like that. That pink tool is way better. going to use this pink and just dot on those maroon swooshes just on the thick part. the gold and I'm just gonna make some dots right in the center I want to add some little top brush strokes, but that paint, those were really thick, so they're just a little wet still, so I'm just going to give us a little bit longer before we do that. Okay, as a last and final touch, we are just going to do some top brush strokes, and then we are done. So I'm taking this two over zero medium size brush, and we're gonna do some top brush strokes right through the center of the blue brush strokes and we're gonna use the gold. So you want kind of a smaller brush because we don't want to cover the whole brush stroke. We just wanna go through the center of it. Like so. So we're just gonna do that on every blue brush stroke and then we will be finished.
Okay, so now we are officially done. I'm gonna leave this for a couple hours. I'm gonna go run some errands, give this time to dry. We wanna make sure that these um, Nugo drops are fully dry before we erase the guide marks and they're very thick and plump. So I'm just gonna give it a couple hours just to make sure that it is completely dry and then we will take off the guide marks, add a varnish and then we are done. Okay. So it's been a couple hours, so this is completely dry now. So I'm going to take a Pampers wet wipe and we are going to wipe off the guide marks. Oops, I got two. Okay, now I am going to varnish this. I am not going to record the process because I'm going to take this outside and I will just be spraying it with this Krylon crystal clear varnish and I will do two coats. So that is pretty much all for this tutorial. I'll go varnish this with two coats and then I will show you guys the final result. Here is the final result after we added the varnish. If you guys are wanting more tutorials, I teach live classes every week on Patreon. I will leave a link in the description of the video below. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and we will see you next time.